a few weeks back, I made a video called why you should not learn Flutter in 2025, where I outlined what I thought was objectively some of the drawbacks of learning Flutter in 2025. Of course, there's another side to the coin. And here are a couple of reasons why you should consider learning Flutter in 2025. First of all, Flutter is true cross-platform development. What that means is that with one code base, you can develop apps for, and now sit down for this, iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, Linux, and the web. So you can build essentially an app for all of these platforms, but with just one code base, which is incredible. As far as I'm concerned, there are not really any other li libraries that can do this to the same extent. React Native has a lot of these platforms, but it doesn't support all of them. And Flutter also allows you to build for any screen, regardless of size, orientation, even Apple Watch, for instance. This will always be relevant, especially in a world where you're talking about mobile applicability where you can read everything on mobile as well as on desktop flutter is the perfect choice for that and especially when you're considering that a lot of these countries that are developing are using android to a much larger extent than they're using ios and android is the more popular operating system for mobile devices in 2025 and therefore you should be developing for this as well in combination with all these other platforms so just this places flutter at a huge advantage compared to native platform development such as kotlin or swift and as well as if you're building for the web in javascript or if you're building for mac or for linux for instance and now this also brings me to number two the fact that there's a single code base means that it's much more efficient Efficient. You don't have to spend a lot of time testing but just because you know that it's going to work. You know that if your app works to a great extent on iOS and now excluding some of the more sensitive libraries, then you also know that it's going to work for the most part on Android, which is just incredible. And it saves you a lot of testing time and a lot of development time. Also, when you go to make updates, you only have to do it in one place. If you have an app that is built, for example, on Swift for iOS and using Kotlin on Android, when you want to make an update, you have to make sure that the update looks the same on Swift and it looks the same in Kotlin on Android. And this is going to mean more development time, almost the double development time, because you're going to be writing in two different languages for those two different platforms. And now you're doing even more if you're factoring in the web, for example, or if you want to have a Mac app or if you want to have a Windows app then those are completely different platforms, which means that if you want to expand to this in the future, in the app that you're building, it's going to be a lot less efficient than having just one code base, which Flutter allows you to do. Number three is that Flutter features hot reload. Hot reload means that you can refresh the app, so to speak, in, instead of just rebuilding the entire app in that you will have to fetch everything again, all of the providers, etc. You can hot reload the app, which will mean that you'll be able to see any UI changes or non-stateful changes that you make to the app instantly. This makes app development a lot quicker. And for anyone who has just used Flutter in the past, this is gonna seem like a no brainer. But if you test using something or a framework or building in a way that doesn't allow you to use this hot reload, then you know how much longer it's gonna take you to develop. It's just so simple to be able to have a screen up uh, and your VS Code window next to it. And as soon as you've made some changes, you can just hot reload and you'll stay on the same page. It won't have to rebuild the whole thing. All the data won't have to be fetched again. But you can see, for example, the result of you changing the color of that button there and moving this text there instantly. And when you compare this to some of the other frameworks, that's a lot more efficient and a lot faster than you could be. So this is one of the major benefits of Flutter. It's a very efficient framework to build apps with. Number four is a large widget library. Regardless of the type of widget that you want to use, for example, you want to use a chart builder or you want to use a QR code reader or a music player, someone has built a widget for you. The widget library of Flutter is massive and it's very well packaged by Google, so you can quite easily search for it. There's always good documentation and it's always very easy to install. Now, this isn't the case for all other frameworks. For example, if you want to build using Kotlin, there are a lot of libraries for you out there. However, I don't think that they are as well documented and I don't think they are as vast and as modern as a lot of the Flutter ones are. So this is definitely an advantage to consider that you're going to be able to pick and choose from a lot of different widget libraries in order to use them inside of your Flutter app. Number five is that Google have made Flutter to be very high performance. If you have ever used one of the Flutter apps, for example, if you have used Alibaba on your device, or if you've used Google Ads or Google Pay, you know that these apps are high performing. They are built in such a way, and it's a very modern framework. It was developed in 2018, meaning that it's very modern and it's very new. And it was built with cross-platform performance in mind. So the way that code is rendered through the impeller engine, which is what Flutter uses, uh, in order to build 
almost natively on iOS and on Android makes it very high performing. So you'll notice that a lot of these Flutter apps are very fast, they are very responsive, and they can interact with native features on your device. For example, swipe to the left on iOS works per perfectly fine. And this isn't the case or hasn't always been the case with a lot of these other frameworks. So that is definitely one of the pluses for Flutter. You can expect that the apps you build will be high performing and the performance will never be anything which you have to worry about. Number six is that it is backed by Google. And now I must say that this definitely is an advantage. Having a behemoth of a company and quite a good reputation company when it comes to development back something like Flutter means that it's always gonna be well maintained Updates are always going to be coming. There's always going to be good documentation for everything. And there's never going to be any downturn in this just because Google will pr be prioritizing this. They have an immense incentive to prioritize Flutter because if people build apps with Flutter and they can build high quality apps, Google, which also then owns the Android Play Store, can encourage people to publish these good high quality apps and make sure that they're of high good quality, they're fast, they're responsive, etc., which only improves the experience for people on Android devices and who are using Google Play. So Google has an incentive to make Flutter as good as possible and also ensure that Flutter is continually updated and that new features are added, which I would argue is a huge plus. Number seven is that Flutter is still seeing significant growth. And one of the points that I made in the last video was that obviously developer jobs are not as frequent and are not as in demand as they were before. But this doesn't just apply to Flutter. This is applies to all tech jobs. When we saw that interest rates were very low in 2020, 2021, 2019, cash and capital was almost free, meaning that a lot of these startups could raise and borrow a lot of money and they could hire developers very quickly. And this we also saw during 2021, 2022, the development, the developer hiring peak where companies were just hiring developers and investing into their startups and their ideas at an incredible rate. And then we saw a little bit of the post pandemic, not recession really, but we did see a very significant increase in interest rates. And what this means for companies such as startups is that the world of capital that is completely free is done. It's over. This means that they cannot raise money as easily and they can also not borrow money as easily, meaning that they're going to be more restrictive in how they hire. And they're also they're, there's more push from investors for them to be profitable when capital is free because they cannot finance their they cannot finance their businesses through loans or through uh, investments to the same degree, which then means that capital is not as abundant and hiring therefore has to slow down and they have to push to be more efficient, which also led to a lot of redundancies within the tech sector. This isn't isolated to Flutter and it's not a Flutter issue. Flutter is a great framework. There were a lot of Flutter jobs just like there were a lot of Python jobs and a lot of JavaScript jobs. Now I'm generalizing here and speaking in regards to languages but you get the point that I make. So Flutter did see a decrease in the number of job opportunities but so did all tech roles. The truth is that Flutter is still growing a lot and if you take a look at the chart which shows the number of top million apps on the Google Play or the iOS app store you see that the share of Flutter apps is continually increasing and so is it for the top 10,000 apps, for example. And if you look at the issues on Stack Overflow, Flutter is still growing and it's still growing at a much quicker rate than any other framework. So therefore, if you are gonna learn mobile app development, then definitely Flutter is a good option just because of that, because it is increasing in popularity. And as more and more apps are using Flutter, they're gonna need to be maintained by someone who knows Flutter and they're gonna need to be improved by someone who knows Flutter. And that means that Flutter is still gonna continue to be in demand. And with that said, the point that I made in the other video that caught a lot of pushback was that if you're gonna learn something, one programming language, and that's just gonna be it, then Flutter isn't the best option. And you could argue that if you just want to learn how to code, you want to work at a big company, you want to get some features told to you, this is what we need to develop, and you just want to shuffle through the code and develop that, Flutter could still work, but I don't think it would be the best plan. If you want to learn Flutter, I think you should combine it with another skill, such as UI design, or you should specify. So you learn Flutter, but you learn development for... Um, iOS widgets, for example, i.e. the things you can put on the home screen, or how to integrate AI into your mobile app, or AR using Flutter. Something a little bit more specific, because I think if you're just going to shuffle through code, you're more secure learning to shuffle through the type of code that a lot of the banks use, for example, or that a lot of apps are already built on. So I would still argue, yeah, sure, you could definitely get a Flutter, pure Flutter job at an agency or that a company that has their apps built in Flutter, but I would argue that it's slightly better to learn another language in that case, for example, Python. 
So therefore, my personal criticism of Flutter was more towards the approach that other people had that they're gonna learn Flutter and get a job using just Flutter. But if you are looking to get into mobile app development, you wanna build your own apps, for example, then I don't think there is a better option than Flutter. Then Flutter is definitely the best option for you. You, for example, have an app idea, you wanna develop this particular app and you wanna bring it to the market, I would definitely not learn anything other than Flutter because you can build for so many screens, it is so high performance, and because it's becoming so common on Stack Overflow, there's always documentation for all the issues, and you can use the wonderful, wonderful widget library that people are contributing to continuously. So with that said, those are a couple of the reasons why I would learn Flutter, and look at me. Uh, again, at the end of the day, look at what I'm doing. I'm using Flutter as my main programming language, and at this point, my main income source, so definitely I would recommend learning Flutter, but I would just think about the approach that you have. If you have any other thoughts, if you agree with me, if you don't disagree with me, if you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.